G'day guys, Ninja here. Got little alchemy here with me too today. I wanted to do just a little bit of a different video today. Um, bit of a walk and talk around my house. And um, yeah, get to know me a little bit better and get to know uh, some of the principles of the business and just some general philosophy I've got in my head. So see how it comes out, eh? Anyway, let's go. So, I'll turn it around. This is my driveway. This is where I come every day. So I live in a suburb called Alinda, and that's about an hour away from Melbourne CBD. It's out east. And yeah, it takes about an hour for me to get in there to Richmond, which is close to the CBD. So yeah, the Mount Dandenongs, where, where, this, where Alinda is, it's renowned for its forests and its gardens. So a lot of people come up here to come to B&Bs and to get away from the city and to get into nature. So this is my driveway. So we've got a little fairy garden here for the kids, mushrooms and things. So yeah, this is where I come each day. This driveway, we actually light it up at night time. It's got these um, floodlights, so that's fairly cool. And uh, yeah, so this is this is where I live. So if you might recognize down here is where I did some live workouts. Um, yeah, during the during our lockdown here in Australia, did some live workouts. I chopped wood and did our lifts and stuff like that. I might see some little pathways here. So pathways up there and actually back here, there's another pathway down there. So that pathway actually leads down to the bottom of the house where we're gonna actually put our bed and breakfast one day. So yeah, so let's keep on walking a little bit. So this is trampoline, a little lowered basketball ring and some of the wood that I chopped in that. And that's my house in there. So I keep on walking through, got my shed here. It's a sand pit for the kids. It's an old pirate ship. And a little mushroom table for them. But uh, I'll take you for a walk out the side here. So uh, yeah, this is, what I look out to each morning. We got a little, an old clawfoot bath here that we've, we use quite a bit. And uh, yeah, we just run hot water from the, from the washing machine out there. So that's a non-native tree there, that light green one, but all the rest are pretty much uh, natives. That there is a, a mountain ash. I'll try and get to the top of it. It's about 80 meters tall. So all these ferns here, they're tree ferns. You can see that one there, it's probably about nearly 10 meters tall, I'd reckon. And over here we've got, um, luckily we've got a, a king parrot. A king parrot, there's one there. You see that they're quite tame. We feed them all the time. How cool is that? How cool is that alchemy, huh? Look. So yeah, that's the view. Got some um, hydrangeas down there, they're the flowers. Zoom in on them a little bit. Yeah, but the, the rest is all pretty native forest, except for that light green one. Yeah. Massive rock there. So this is pathway down to the side of the house. So when um, I originally came to this property, a uh, year and a half ago, 
all these pathways weren't actually here, they were hidden. So the forest had reclaimed all these pathways. So even down here it was, it was just so overgrown with, with plants. And um, yeah, I started, I couldn't um, actually come onto the property when we first bought it because it was so wet. It is a rainforest. But um, yeah, all these pathways I managed to reclaim. So you can see how these paths are here. So what I wanted to talk about a little bit was about pathways. And you can see how there's all this rock work around. Yeah, alchemy. I'll get down to this a little bit better rock work in a minute. You can see all these ferns. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the pathways that are here. So I, I didn't actually know that the pathways existed until I started trying to clear clear a bit so I could actually come down onto the block. And um, yeah, I really like analogy that I was thinking of with the pathways. So the, the pathways that the people before me, they made them really well. I'll just turn it around here. You can see all this rock work. So made all these pathways and they trod them so well they compacted gravel down and um, yeah you could really still find them. So what I was thinking about that kind of thing for analogy was pathways, habits, nervous system, diet, different things like that. You know, or even just stuff you've learned in the past. If you've really learnt it well, then those pathways, even though you haven't used them, there's weeds and whatever has grown over cobwebs and rust and things like that. It's still possible to kind of get things back, you know, if you have really laid a good foundation of pathways. So um, the other thing I'd like to talk about too is is uh, just being a gardener. I just rate it so highly. Hey, anyway, if I can go again. Yeah, the, I really love the being a gardener. I've um, actually tried to grow quite a few fruit trees in the past at a different property and berry bushes and things like that, veggies. And um, yeah, did a lot of like grooming of the block as well. Like lots of lawn mowing, brush cutting, trimming, things like that. So that's really um, satisfying being in, when you're in the garden because you can actually see, the, see your labor, you get progress all the time, you make it better, you make it more organized. And it's just a really good satisfying feeling when you're a gardener. You do lots of practical exercise as well, like chopping, trim, trimming, up and down hills. The hills here, up here are just so steep. So, um, yeah, it's just a really good exercise. Sunlight is, you know, it so, makes you feel so good. You know, the fresh air, breathing the, the local air, you know, get into the, the cleanest air that you can get and do some good breathing. But um, the other thing that I really like is, you know, when, when you do your gardening, it's you get in the moment, you just really tuned into your you know, the senses, you know, what you're doing, what you're looking at, what you're hearing, uh, what you're smelling, things like that. Um, yeah, it's just such a, like a spiritual kind of thing, but you also have quite often epiphanies and you realize, you know, things, even if you're not thinking about an issue or problem or whatever, you can actually solve it when you're in the garden. So things just come to you, just sort of, um, yeah, just really kind of, you know, complex kind of subjects and content can um, become apparent to you. So I really like it from that kind of perspective. And I've actually come up with quite a few different, um, uh, I've, you know, I've noticed quite a few different patterns, I suppose, when I've been gardening. So and that's been um, something that I've been able to transfer into the treatment room. So in my business and things like that. So where what I've kind of noticed is it happens all the time 
is where it's where there's corners, where there's nooks and crannies, where it's underneath trees, corners, things like that. On the sides of the pathways, that's where stuff, the weeds start to grow. So, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of um, a, quite a, an interesting kind of observation that I've made, you know, because that's where um, things become stagnant. They become blocked. And the, the more that that starts to um, get going, it creeps out into the pathways. And it's it sort of, um, it's so important to, to know what pathways you want, know what you want in your garden and nurture that, you know. And um, yeah, so I kind of liken that to different places in the body where things get blocked up. So similarities always occur. So, and I just think that that's like a universal law. So we know, you know, pretty much where things are going to get, get clogged up because there's nooks and crannies in the body. And it, it goes across other things I've learned from myself as well. Like I was unknowingly blocking up my own body early in my life. I was just oblivious to why, why um, I had acne, why <laughs> I wasn't shitting properly, things like that. And I just cleaned my body out. I found natural hygienic work and you know fasting clonic irrigation and juicing like vegetable juices and then clean my body out and then started feeding myself with better food so it was raw food it was lots of veggies lots of fruits sauerkrauts and you know superfoods and then um, we got into the adaptogen herbs or the mushrooms so it was just like um yeah, I, I was on a mission on it once I found that pathway and it was just because I, you know, a few different people said, oh, you'd be interested in that, you know, try this, try that. And because I was open to it, I went down these particular pathways and it really suited me. So, yeah, I just wanted to, to sort of say that, you know, those cleaning, cleaning kind of analogy, clearing analogies, that they are really kind of fundamental principles um, you know, a little thing like 80% of, you know, the Nobel Science Prize winners, they're actually later proven to be wrong. So, but I think that, you know, getting into nature and cleaning, cleaning things first, no matter what it might be, and then feeding it with better things. So you, that can kind of go across a lot of different subject matter. So, you know, like the body is, is one thing that we can clean and, and then put put back better feed but we can also do that conceptually as well whether it's in a business or a relationship we can we can clear things out tidy them up organize them better communicate better get better flow with things and then you know the right kind of people the right kind of opportunities will appear so it's, it's just a an, a a uh a principle that i've stuck with and and learnt learn from observation and it's true for me until something you know an update an upgrade comes along so you know just people like me talking about this this kind of stuff it might um you know encourage other people or inspire other people to try things to clear out things and yeah i suppose the, the other little thing i was thinking of we just don't know what we've got in our own backyard you know, sometimes we're searching for, you know, for things outside of ourselves. Our um, going, trying to go on holidays or trying to get material things into our life, whereas we can probably look in our own backyards. And um, I literally looked in my own backyard, but we can kind of conceptually look in our own backyard. And and like a lot of times, the happiness is there already. You know, it's. The smile of your kid, you know, it's conversation with friends and family, colleagues, things like this, where you kind of kick off each other and, and really, you know, you know, get some stimulation, you fill up your buckets, you know, it's, it's not, you know, happiness isn't in a car or achieving social status necessarily, it could be, but um, a lot of times it's the things that are free that um, give us the joy, you know, that engaging conversation learning things 
um, yeah, and just getting in touch with nature. That's where I've, I've found a lot of joy and a lot of inspiration and being in the moment, that's so important. That's all we've really got. You know, the future doesn't exist. The past doesn't actually exist anymore. So all that we've got is right now. So getting present is a really important thing to, to be able to do. Just gonna turn the, the camera around so you can have a look. So this little particular spot here, I've done quite a little bit of, bit of burning, but um, it's a cleared off spot. And you know, it could be pitch a, a TP here or something in the, in the future or meditate, things like that. Have a little party or something. But uh, yeah, just these, this rock work is just sort of crazy. I just didn't even know it was there. I'll take a little bit more walk down here. And this is like a true kind of Australian native bush. You know, these tree ferns, probably 10, eight meters that one there, you know, all these pathways. And the sun doesn't get into this sort of section of the world that much. This is so dense with trees. So it's got another bit down here. So this is kind of really cool, I've found, because it's um, rock work that's right down my block. You can't even see my house from, from down here. And we had a little ceremony for alchemy when she was born, like placenta burial. It's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but we had a, a nice ceremony to mark mark her birth and and um yeah it was really nice so anyway i'm gonna pause there i'm going down to a big tree at the bottom of the block so i'll see you down there so i'm down at a, a massive tree but i just saw a, a black kangaroo a little wallaby go past and the, i just sort of was such a sweet thing they thumped through the forest it's nowhere they're going down here but um Anyway, there's there's so much wildlife down here as well. So we've got kangaroos, possums, wombats. Um, yeah, we've also got deers. They're not native, but there's lots of deers in this forest. Also got lots of um, birds. So we saw some a king parrot up there. We've got the white cockatoos, the rainbow lorikeets, the rosellas, uh, corowongs. There's a few birds like that, but the the most the most cool one is actually a lyrebird. So the lyrebird are like a, a kind of a dark peacock kind of bird. They're not that big, like a more a turkey size. And they actually mimic all the different animals in the forest. So they can just mimic any any animal noise. But they can also mimic like things like um, cameras and voices, human voices and chainsaws and things like this. All these different noises that are in the forest they can actually mimic these noises. So I might cut a little bit of footage in here so you can kind of check them out a little bit. So. And now a camera with a motor drive. see we're underneath some some massive trees here but I'm going to turn it turn the camera around and we can see this tree here which I really love coming down to it might not look that impressive on the camera but that hole in the tree there is actually probably probably three or four meters high and you could probably fit you know, four people stand inside there so, and I know a wombat has lived in here at some stage. So, just look in there a little bit. Oh, up in there, but yeah, you can see that people could actually stand in there. If we look up, it is just a massive tree. So a big, big grandfather tree. Seen a few things. 
in his day, these trees. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. So anyway, I'm going to walk up the block again and uh, I'll show you something, uh, my favorite thing. So just stay tuned for that. Just walking back up the block and even down further, there's this rock work. It's just, just here. So it's pretty cool. That's where the ceremony was in there. Well, Alchemy's had a bit of a. You right, bub? Anyway, we'll go. Move on. So that's the view back up my driveway. All these big trees, yeah, they. The mountain ash is the biggest flowering tree in the world and they um, they get to 80 meters so big ones up there like that the, these ones on my block are actually 80 meters so they get to i think the biggest one ever was 130 30 meters tall that's very tall there's only um for my memory there's only 22 trees that actually get to 80 meters so i'm pretty privileged to have um be on a property that's got massive trees on it so we can see pathways down here more rock work come down here a little bit more this pathway goes down here you see more rock work and that's into where our little b and b will be and there's actually a, a spa bath in there eight seater it's hot all the time so yeah, that's quite cool. But we're gonna go down this pathway here and we're gonna go next door. So this is not actually my property next door, but it's a massive <laughs> bit of forest that no one's really been on for, for decades, I'd say. So there's some uh, cool stuff over here I wanna show you. So uh, I'll see you in a minute when we, when we get over there. So I'm over next door and I'm at the place where I come over a little bit but I just didn't know what I had in my own backyard here. So I'll just uh, spin the camera around. So I'd come to this sort of section here before and there's a little creek from a natural spring. So I'll get the feed in here quite a bit of mud but then yes yesterday I walked up here a bit further and I noticed this here there's an old footbridge here and the creeks just here so got a little creek just running under a bridge here so we've got lots of natural bridges like these tree ferns that have fallen over but look at this this wouldn't have been anyone down here for years decades i reckon i actually there was heaps of fern fronds and broken branches and stuff over the top of it but i actually took it all off yesterday and reishi and myself walked along so yeah so there's a bridge here you can see tree ferns that's a massive tree fern there that's fallen but it's still alive if we go here a bit more See that it's a bit bigger. So I'll get into the mud here. Yeah, look at this nice smooth rock. Oh yeah, beautiful. Oh yeah. So um, I've always been fascinated with uh, natural springs so yeah how this uh, spring starts up the top of the hill here a little bit further uh, over the road over, it's not actually on this property but goes underneath the road but I've just always marveled at a spring so I go and collect spring water from a different mountain around here but um, 
just how magical it is that the um, water levitates, comes up through out of the middle of the earth, goes through all these different layers and kind of get filters and things like that and it comes out and breathes. So that life force, it touches the atmosphere and that electrical charge just at that moment just brings it to life. Pure cold water. So just love it. And then um, you sort of notice in here there's lots of moss and there's mushrooms and there's, you know, all the different ferns. There's a whole ecosystem going on and it's, yeah, like we said before, it's in my backyard and it just sort of, no one plants this, no one waters this. It just sort of happens. There's this stuff going on everywhere. It's just sort of at the, you know, macro level, like we can see. The water's coming through, nourishes this whole region. The, um, there's all these different plants that are, that are flourishing, but there's also these microbes. And the animals all kind of come through and they, they shed here, they eat the vegetation a little bit, they, they create air, you know, to come through the wind. Now we've got a little bit of sun getting through, we've got the air, clean air. We're in a place where you know, no chemicals would be in this 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 place here. So it'd be just um, clean. So the the enemy of human pretty much is our chemicals and toxins. So you can do that on a conceptual level as well. What what is toxic? You know, we need to clear that out, clean that out, trim it back, those kind of things. So um yeah so that that's one of the things like i love that there's diversity so i'll just spin the camera around and i've got this waterfall here this little one but <laughs> it's on my block you can probably see that in the past they've probably put these rocks here and there's actually a pipe so you can see down the bottom there so this water would have nourished you know different people and people would have walked here things like that so I'm gonna get a bit of a me drinking the water <laughs> okay. here we go <laughs> it's cold and beautiful so I'm going to just keep on going a little bit further so like I was saying before too that I just didn't explore that much and look what's here I didn't even know there was a, a waterfall here and then I, just yesterday I saw this one as well so up here So we've got our waterfall here as well. So how cool is that? You see we're in natural forest. It just sort of, it all takes care of itself. Everything's working together. Going back to the, what I was talking about before, about diversity, all these different things are here. We've got all the mosses, the mushrooms, the funguses. We've got the plants, we've got the animals. We've also got at a micro level, all the bacteria, whatever it are, it's in there. It's, it's all working together in a community. And there's no, everyone's got their job, they've got their purpose in place, and they've worked it out. There's no emotion because everyone knows what they're doing. Things flourish, there's flow here. So, and there's lots of diversity when you dig beneath the surface a little bit and you look a bit further. So that's what um, gives us a tapestry of life, the richness of life. You know, so that's that's what I really love is um, all this diversity. You know, and it's right right in our own backyard. We've just got to get into nature, get to the cleanest place you can get to. 
Do some breathing. Have your bare feet. Touch nature. Clear out everything. You know, it's so good for us. Nature knows. It's got the answers. They're all here for us. So that's, I just encourage you. Diversity is another good kind of topic to think about too. The richness of life it comes from diversity. All different cultures, all different ideas on a project. That's what makes it great. If you just got one perspective, one idea, then it's not going to be that great. But when a lot of people come together and you mastermind, it's sort of it just, it's great. And so that's what is in nature. We've got diversity everywhere. So that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes life interesting. If we're not, if we're all the same, there's no diversity, then we're, it's just boring. So yeah, just a couple of little concepts I wanted to, kind of share with you and I just wanted to I suppose at this stage just thank a lot of different people I'm thinking of that have inspired me to try things just recently it's it's Zach Bush like breathe your biome go to all the different environments earth out breathe and um, yeah it's that diversity of biomes the air the different nature that makes us healthier so exposure is a really important thing. When we expose ourselves to a, a bunch of different things, we get stronger, we get more perspective, more knowledge, more truth, perhaps, you know? So I encourage everyone to be open to other people, other ideas. But um, I kind of just come back to nature. That's where the truth lies. Keep things clear, clean things out in your body, and then back with better feed you know as raw as possible as natural as possible as organic as possible as local as possible and you know spray free it's the toxins physical toxins and conceptual toxins we need to kind of clear them out understand you know what's going on and then then clear it out that's when we can prosper is when we can um, process things know that they've taught us something or showed us something whatever it might be even though it's a challenge and then we can um we can move on as a better person you know more enlightened clearer and um yeah have a a better kind of passageway through life of course through the diversity the exposure to diversity exposure to different challenges and um one of my other little things i was thinking of as well is um, the best things in life are free. I truly believe that. Like, um, you just don't have to go far to get into nature. Even if it's a park, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be nature. It's still going to be natural. And, um, yeah, just, I think, take time to walk in the forest. Be by yourself. Don't be frightened of that. You know, it might be uncomfortable at the start, but you'll be better for it. Um, yeah, just what is really rich in my life is just conversation and it is diversity of conversation that makes it even cooler you know like you, you just get different concepts different ideas even if you don't agree with it it's, it's good to hear different ideas because that that's where you can um perhaps think oh shit maybe i wasn't looking at things fully or i, I understand somebody else's perspective now so don't just block things don't just delete things don't just poison things that's um Let's work with things. It's community that is um, a really important thing. So community is happening here in the forest. Everything is working together. And in our body, there's community happening. Everything's working together. Uh, just a little bit of trivia. Like um, a billion is a concept that our human brain can't really kind of fathom. If we had um, a billion seconds, that'd be 31.8 years. So um, a trillion is um, 31,000 years, I think. Yeah, 31,000 or 131,000 years. So it's, it's a lot anyway. So to count up to that number. So just uh, why I'm kind of talking about this is we've just done some research. We've probably got about 50 trillion cells in our body. So times 130,000 times 50. And that's how many cells we've got. But also, if you the latest research now we've got microscopes we've got just as many bacteria 
in our body. And then there's nanobacteria as well. And then we've got viruses, we've got half a million viruses just living in our body in community. So this is a, a theory that um, I've been listening to Zach Bush talk about. And because I've, I've been into um, natural hygiene for a long time too, it's not a new theory to have lots of bacteria in your body. And no, no bacteria is good or bad. It's just community. And when things get out of balance, that's when we start to have trouble in our body. It's when we start to have trouble in our life. So when we have trouble in our business, our relationship, things like that. We don't have flow. So it's a hard thing for us to actually fathom. But um, yeah, the, and, the, and all the cells are changing over all the time. So we're a completely new human every seven years, our biological cells. But what doesn't change is the stuff that's not us. So it can be toxicity. It can be plaque. It can be the shit in our colon. You know, it can be thoughts, you know, that you know, haven't been upgraded, different ways we think. So it's, um, yeah, that's just sort of, I wanted just to talk about that, just put that little concept out there um, and have a think about things. Like we need community, community in our body. So we need to kind of connect with nature. You know, a lot of people are so disconnected with nature, disconnected from themselves, and there's an opportunity to go outside and, and get in the woods, get in the mountains, get it to the, the lake, the ocean, the river, wherever it might be, and immerse yourself in it. And just, you know, notice the little things. They're free. You know, the things that, you know, make you smile is another person's smile. It's just their engagement. It's just helping somebody out, doing something for somebody. And that's the cool stuff. So, yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Might uh, cruise on up to the top and uh, we'll finish off. The creek just keeps on going. Up here. You see there's some rock work here from years ago. I'll keep on going up here. More rock work. It's all hidden. It just gets buried. And this is where the, the creek comes under the road. We've got an old fence here. I'm just going to climb up to the top. Oh, balance on these logs. So that valley down there, that's where we came from. In the forest across the road, that's where the the spring originates from. So that's actually National Forest there, National Park. So we'll just keep on walking around. We'll be back at my house. So I'm back up the top of my house again. So the driveway. So yeah, hopefully you liked having a bit of a tour around Alinda on my property. So if you ever want to come to Alinda, yeah, there's there's a lot lot to do. There's so many walks around. That's what a lot of people do. They come here for the bush walks, and yeah, the bed and breakfasts and the the cafes and. Lots of bike riders as well, so, and just people love just driving around up here. So it's a really nice part of the world and I'm really privileged to be able to live here. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the, the video. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you, bye.